Exodus, the 20th chapter, verses 1 through 17. Go ahead. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in, earth, in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember, the Sabbath day, to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Let's go in Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter. Read verses 13 and 14. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing whether it be good or whether it be evil. Let's go into Revelation chapter 22, verses 14 and 15. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. So thank God for the reading of the law. Because the law is the substance of salvation. You keep the law, you're going to get salvation. Simple as that. So we're going to get right into this lesson, sisters and brothers. You know, people, you hear people, all, uh, the whole, I'm going to tell you something. 90% of the people that call themselves Christians and servants of God, they are New Testament Christians. They don't deal with the Old Testament. They say that God has fulfilled the Old Testament. But it's been fulfilled. Well, I'm here to let you know the people that are New Testament Christians, that same God that you say you serve, he sent a servant that's called Moses. And this Moses, what he taught is good to all generations, sisters and brothers. In fact, he called me to put this lesson together. It's called Moses, God's prophet and lawgiver to all generations. Moses, God's prophet 
and lawgiver to all generations. Because the Lord had, uh, uh, had Solomon said, and there ain't nothing new under the sun, like nothing, sisters and brothers. And this is what people got to understand. Wherever we deal with, it's been here all the time. And it's going to be here because the Lord said he called the end from the beginning. It's all that simple. Now, we're going to get into this lesson. We're going to start this in Numbers, the 12th chapter. Numbers, chapter 12. Because the Lord lets you know that, look, he is God. He don't change. What he gave you on the first day, sisters and brothers, is good on the last day. And this is what people do not understand. Everybody want to make a change. Nothing is the same. You got that old song, everything must change. Not the word of God. It don't change, sisters and brothers. We're going to say Numbers, 12th chapter, and we're going to start reading at verse 1. That lets you know, sisters and brothers, if you're a servant of God, people have to be careful how they approach him or talk about him because God is listening to everything. That's why he got them angels running around. They got the ear everywhere. We're going to start at verse 1. Go ahead. And Miriam and Aaron spake against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married. Uh -huh. For he had now, married. Right, now look, they were speaking against Moses because he married an Ethiopian woman, you know. And now the Lord is the one that told Israel not to marry outside of the nation. However, if you do it and you are a faithful servant, that don't count you because he said, because they will take you away from me. Right. In a lot of cases, that is what happened. It's like David's grandmother was a Moabite, Ruth. So now, the Lord knows who is, so when you see somebody do something, why don't you be quiet and still passing judgment on it? Otherwise, you might hear from the Lord. Go ahead and read. For he had married an Ethiopian woman, and they said, Hath the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses? Had he not spoken also by us? And the Lord heard it. <laughs> and they're going to say, look, in other words, Moses ain't the only prophet. His brother and his sister. <laughs> we he done spoke by us too. And the Lord heard it. So what did the Lord do? Go ahead. Now the man Moses was very meek uh -huh. above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. That was a meek man, wasn't it? Yes. Go ahead. And the Lord spake suddenly unto Moses and unto Aaron and unto Miriam. Come out, ye three, unto the tabernacle of the congregation. And they three came out. Now, they never would have thought in their wildest dream that God wasn't listening. He heard them. Yeah. So he told them, I want y'all to come out to the tabernacle of the congregation. Go ahead and read. And the Lord came down in the pillar of the cloud and stood in the door of the tabernacle uh -huh. and called Aaron and Miriam. Go ahead. And they both came forth. And he said, hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision. Go ahead. And will speak unto him in a dream. My servant Moses is not so, who is faithful in all my house. He says, now, I have prophets. I speak to them. I speak to them in a dream, in a vision. But my prophet, my, my servant Moses, say, hey, he's more than that. Go ahead and read. With him will I speak mouth to mouth. I'm going to speak to him mouth to mouth. Go ahead. Even apparently. Apparently, and that means he's going to let Moses see him, and he did. Yes. Even apparently, go ahead and read. And not in dark speeches. Uh-huh. And the similitude of the Lord shall, be, shall he behold. Go ahead. Wherefore, then were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? Nah, they messing with Moses. He said, now, he ain't like no other prophet. I'm even going to let him see me. And y'all know what he's done, so why was it <clears throat> that y'all was not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? That's why you have to be careful about speaking against servants of God, sister. Because he might be listening to you. Go ahead and read. Verse 9. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against them, uh -huh. and he departed. Go ahead. And the cloud departed from off the tabernacle. Uh -huh. And behold, Miriam became leprous, white as snow. 
And Aaron looked upon Miriam, and behold, she was leprous. Leprosy is, clean, is, is uh, 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 you know, uh, when you leper, that means if you clean leper, that means you just temp, simply turn what we call white, sister and brother. But he really made her white, white right. as snow. And Aaron dropped on his knees and started begging. But the thing about it, what did he say about Moses? He ain't like no other prophet. I'm going to speak to him face to face. I'm going to speak to him apparently, and I'm going to let him see me because he's my similitude to see I'm going to let him see. Right. So what this Moses, this prophet Moses says, sisters and brothers, whatever generation you find yourself in, you'll listen to his prophecy. Let's go into Luke, the 16th chapter. This is where people try to put Lazarus in, in, uh, uh, put Lazarus in heaven. But no, we're not going there for that. We're going here to show you what the Lord said. Luke chapter 16. And we're going to start reading at verse 19. Luke chapter 16. And we're going to start at verse 19. Because if you don't listen to Moses, sisters and brothers, then you are not hearing anything. Luke 16, and we're going to start at verse 19. Luke 16 and verse 19. Okay, read it. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. Go ahead. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores uh -huh. and desired to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Go ahead. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. I always look at that and have a little chuckle, sister and brother. <laughs> Lazarus was buried too. Now he might have went, no, he, was, uh, he might have gone to the uh, uh, rich man's bosom, but that is after the first resurrection. And the rich man, he died and he was buried too. And, let's, and, and, and think about it. Only the righteous are going to be in the first resurrection. <laughs> so that means this thing, this, this uh, uh, thing, this is what Jesus is telling us here, yeah. all took place after the first, uh, second resurrection and after the white throne judgment. Even though it looked like they was both raised at the same time. Right. But it could not be. That would defy all scripture. Go ahead and read. Verse 23. And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torment, uh -huh. and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. Now, in hell, in other words, he was in the lake of fire, sisters and brothers. That let us know that we're going to be able to see them, and they're going to be able to see us. Go ahead and read. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. And send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. He said, look, I'm tormented. Just send Lazarus just a little water on his, on his finger. That means you must really be suffering if, a, if you desire just a drop of water. Mm. But we're not concerned with that. What's coming up is what we're concerned with. Skip down to verse 27. Verse 27, and go ahead. Then he said, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou wouldst send him to my father's house. See, now, Abraham said, look, I can't send him here, there, and you, and you can't come to me because there's a gulf fixed between us. So he turned around and said, okay, then, Father Abraham, send him to my father's house because I got some brothers just like me. Go ahead and read. For I have five brethren that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. So now, send Lazarus to testify to him. What did the Lord say to him? Go ahead. Abraham said unto him, they have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. That's what Abraham said unto the, to the rich man. They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. Now this is Jesus talking here. There wasn't no New Testament, wasn't, no, wasn't nothing but the Old Testament. He said, but they have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. That means if they heard Moses and the prophets, they still wouldn't end up in the lake of fire. Man. But go ahead. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. See what he's saying now? If they saw a person they know is dead, he come. 
and tell them they're going to repent. But he said, look, if they will not hear Moses and the prophet, uh -huh, they will not repent, even though at that time one had risen from the dead. Who was it? It was Jesus. Yes. When this whole conversation takes part. So if people won't hear Moses and the prophets, they won't deal with prophecy, they ain't going to hear Jesus. It's all that simple, and we're going to show you that. So now, what did he say they have? Moses and the prophets. And the prophets. We have the same one, sister and brother. Let's go into Romans, the 10th chapter. Romans, the 10th chapter. Because nobody want to hear prophecy because it's too plain, and it's too cut to the point. If you do this, I'm going to do that to you. You stand against me, I'm going to burn you in the fire. Point, is, point blank. You don't have no room where you can get something twisted and say, God love everybody. You really don't have that in the New Testament either. But sometimes you can get in Paul writing and you can slip something by people. Romans the 10th chapter, we're going to start reading at verse 1. Romans 10 and verse 1. Okay, read it. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel uh -huh. is that they might be saved. Go ahead. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. And we have a zeal, sister and brother. There are more churches in our neighborhood yep. than Carter have Liverpool. We got churches everywhere. I knew places on West 55th Street had about five churches. So on 71st Street, we have two churches sitting on the same lot. Churches everywhere, all kind of zeal, but not according to knowledge. Don't have no knowledge. Go ahead and read. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. And that's what happens when you're ignorant of God's righteousness. You don't know what sin is. You start calling sin, so sin is smoking and drinking. Some of them are all kind of uncleanness. Uncleanness according to what? Instead of saying plainly what the Bible says, sin is the transgression mm -hmm. of the law. Yes. But you can't say that. You know why? Because you said the law ain't no more. So now, you're ignorant of God's righteousness, you go about establishing your own righteousness. You have even come up with your own brand of sin. Go ahead and read. Verse 4. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. But if you have some sense, you know that the law that Christ ended was this law of animal sacrifice, yes, not the commandment. That's why when he died on the cross, the veil of the temple ripped from top to bottom. What did that mean? That mean that there was no more place for the high priest to come and sprinkle the blood before the veil. So now if you had no place to sprinkle the blood, then you had no reason to kill an animal right. sacrifice. So you stopped killing the animal, he caused sacrifices in the old place in the seas. He ended the law, the law of animal sacrifice. Go ahead and read. For Moses describes the righteousness which is of the law. Now, he describes the righteousness which is of the real law, the raw law. People use this to try and condemn Moses, right? But no, Paul is not condemning. Paul is upholding it. Yes. We're going to show you that. Go ahead and read. That the man which doeth those things shall live by them. Look, if you are going to walk in the law, you got, if you're going to keep the law, you have to walk in it, don't right. you? Right. How can I read, thou shalt not commit adultery, and as soon as Julius turn your back, I'm going to slip in his back door and commit adultery with his wife. But I'm going to live by him. That means I will not do that. Go ahead and read. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise. This is what they make us see now. We are in the righteousness of faith. Faith means believe. Believe what? The law. Right. People have gone totally ignorant, sisters and brothers. Geek. Faith is not an entity within itself. Faith don't stand alone. Faith is something that only exists if you have something to believe in. That is right. He said, but the right no faith is on this order. Go ahead and read. Stay not in thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down from above. Go ahead. Or who shall descend into the deep? That is to bring up Christ again from the dead. Go ahead. But what saith it? But what saith it? What is this it he is talking about? We're going to show it to you. But what saith it? Go ahead and read. The word is not thee. The what? The word. 
The word is near you. Go ahead and read. Even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that is the word of faith which we preach. The word, even in your mouth and in your heart, in your lap, that is the word that we teach you to have faith in. Well, faith cannot stand alone. I have to have something to believe. So let's go and look at that it that he said, what says it. Let's go into Deuteronomy the third he, cha 30th he, chapter. Deuteronomy chapter 30. Moses writing, sisters and brothers. Deuteronomy chapter 30. Because the Lord told Israel, which we're going to be dealing with when black history come up next month, told Israel, if you do what I say, I'm going to bless you. But if you don't do what I say, I'm going to curse you. And we didn't do what he said, so we honor the curse. You tell me when I ain't under no curse, whose children are getting shot in the street? We are. Who got the lowest unemployment? Well, I can name some stuff, and you don't pay no attention to it. I ain't cursed. I just looked at it. I do that a lot of times. I got to the point, and I don't say nothing. I just look at them. Go on about my business. Because huh. they don't need me arguing with a dead person. Deuteronomy 30. So after the, 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 the curses, this is the blessing, but we didn't get the blessing. We got the curses. Right. But anyway, 30 and 1. Go ahead and read. And it shall come to pass, when all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse, which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations uh -huh. whither the Lord thy God hath driven thee. He said, now once these have come upon you, and you call them to mind, that's what we have done now, where he had driven us. Skip down to verse 3. Go ahead. That then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity. Then the Lord thy God will reverse thy captivity. And have compassion upon thee. And have compassion upon thee. Go ahead and read. And will return and gather thee from all the nations whither the Lord thy God has scattered thee. And will return. He didn't say he's going to send another Moses. Nope. He ain't going to send another man. Uh-uh. The Lord is the one that's going to gather Israel. So Israel will be scattered all over the nation until Jesus returns, sisters and brothers. And he ain't going to go nowhere. If he is, he ain't going to be, somebody going to be ruling over him in his own house. That's why years ago, brother, he said to me, brother, boy, why, why aren't you going to Jerusalem? Why should I go to my house if somebody else is in charge? He is right. When I go home, I'm the head of my household. So why should I go back to my country and can't be the head and somebody else, a stranger, is going to tell me what to do in my country. I expect to obey the stranger here, but not that. No, I ain't going back. Please. I'm going to wait on the Lord. That is right. So still, now, once you get back, you still going to have to obey and do the thing that the Lord says. Skip down to verse 8. You finished that verse yes, 3, sir. right? Skip yes. down to verse 8 and go ahead. And thou shalt return. And obey the voice of the Lord. And, and, do thou all. Shall, and thou shalt return and obey the voice of the Lord. Go ahead. And do all his commandments, which I command thee this day. And do all his commandments, which was changed when Jesus came. That I command thee this day. Same commandments, sisters and brothers. He said, which I command you this day. Go ahead. And what day was that? The day of Moses. Go ahead and read. And the Lord thy God will make thee plenteous in every work of thine hand. Go ahead. In the fruit of thy body, and in the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of thy land, for good. For the Lord will again rejoice over thee for good, as he rejoiced over thy fathers. Skip down to verse 11 and go ahead. For this commandment, which I command thee this day. For this commandment, which I command thee this day. Go ahead. It is not hidden from thee. It's not hidden from you. Go ahead. Neither is it far off. Now, Paul said, neither is it in heaven. He quoted this, but he said, neither is it far off. Go ahead, read. It is not in heaven. Go ahead. That thou shouldest say, who shall go up for us to heaven and bring it unto us that we may hear it and do it? So you ain't have to wait for no Holy Ghost to speak in your ear Come and on. tell you the law, do you? Nobody have to go up and you don't have to say, who's going to go to heaven and bring it down? Go ahead and read. Neither is it beyond the sea uh -huh. that thou shouldst say, who shall go over the sea for us and bring it unto us that we may hear it and do it. So now we ain't got to go to Jerusalem and learn to speak Hebrew. No. To know what the Lord is. Because the Lord told you by the mouth of Isaiah with a stammering lip 
in another tongue will I speak to this people. And Paul tell you, with men of other tongue will I speak to this people. So you don't need nobody to go over to sea and bring it back. So where is it? Go ahead. But the word is very nigh unto thee. But the word is very near unto you. Go ahead and read. In thy mouth and in thy heart that thou mayest do it. Isn't this what Paul quoted? I can quote Paul go against Moses and quote Moses. Same word, same law, same commandment. In every generation. Go ahead and read. See, I have set before thee this day life and good and death and evil. Wait a minute. You mean Moses is the one that set before us life and good, death and evil? Moses did. But Christ, did, but Moses that I have set before you. Good and evil, life and death. Go ahead and read. And that I command thee this day Go ahead. to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, and to keep his commandments, and his statutes, and his judgment, that thou mayest live and multiply, and the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land where thou goest to possess it. Oh, so the thing he set before you was his commandments. This day, that you might love the Lord, and keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgment. This day I have done that. What verse was that? That was the end of verse 16. Skip down to verse 19. And he's going to call something that's going to be to all generations a presence. What is that? Go ahead and read. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. Go ahead. That I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. He said, I call heaven, and it's still there, and earth. They are the Lord's witnesses. Yes, sir. That he has set before you by the mouth of Moses, life and death and good and evil. And he said, choose life and live. God made us a free agent. Oh, we, what we got to do when you're talking to somebody, you don't condemn them, you show them what's right, and then it's up to them to choose it. But he said, this day, what day was that that he said? His commandments. If you do them, you're going to live. If you don't, you're going to die. Let's see if Jesus changed any of that. Let's go on to Matthew, the 19th chapter. Because surely people think that Christ came, you know, he, he didn't change this and he changed. Well, let's see. What life and death is made out of? This goes beyond just the physical life and death, sisters and brothers. Matthew chapter 19. Matthew chapter 19. And we're going to start at verse 16. We're going to see if Jesus changed anything. Matthew 19 and verse 16. Because nobody reads, sisters and brothers. I hear people condemning stuff they never read about it. Right. I will condemn nothing until I read or research it. Verse 16, Matthew 19 and verse 16. Read it. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good things shall I do that I may have eternal life? Now, you're not talking about have a good life, a big car, and eat well, didn't it? No. This guy's talking about eternal life. What good thing? Must I do to have eternal life? First thing Jesus said, supper. Go ahead and read. And he said unto him, uh -huh. Why callest thou me good? Go ahead. There is none good but one, that is God. Now Jesus could say that because he was the son of man then. He was not God. That's why he said there's one. That's why I get people running around with Reverend X, Y, and Z. Holy Reverend is God's name. He said, But there's one that's good, and that is God. But, go ahead and read. But if thou will enter into life, keep the commandments. But if you will enter into life, that's eternal life, keep the commandments. That's it. People want to read further. Well, you know, the man said, I did this, and, and that's how I've been doing this, and Jesus said, sell it and sell everything you got and follow. No, that is irrelevant. He asked a specific question, and God gave him a specific answer. If you will enter into eternal life, Keep the commandments. Then why are we not surprised? Because Moses said, I set before you this day, good and evil. 
Life and death. Choose life and live. So why should Jesus come and put something else different on the table? Being he's the one that dictated the message to Moses. Nothing changed. Moses told you. Nothing changed, sisters and brothers. Now let's go into Genesis, the second chapter. We're just going to point some things out. Genesis chapter 2. That's why you have all these people running around, New Testament Christians, call themselves teaching the word of God and don't have a lick of understanding. Why? It's because they do not go and deal with the Old Testament. And Jesus told you the law and the testimony. Yes. The law and the testimony. That's the Old and the New Testament. If they speak not according to that, there's no light in them. In other words, there's no truth in them. You have to do both, sisters and brothers. Genesis 2, and we're going to look at the creation. Lord created everything, then he rested. Genesis 2 and verse 1. Go ahead and read. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. Go ahead. And on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. Now, the Lord rested on the seventh day from all the work we have made. Now, then when it comes to sun, moon, star, and earth, and all the physical stuff, he rested because they're still here. There ain't nothing here. However, that don't mean that God don't have another day of rest. Because God's business is man. And we are going to have us a look at that. Was that third verse you finished that? That was verse 2. Okay, go ahead. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. And everything was here. Earth was here. Heaven was here. Stars, moon, everything. Even man was here. But then, the Bible tells you that Jesus said, if Father work and I work, do I? That means even though he has finished putting every physical object in place, he still has some more work. That means that he had to do some more resting. And this is what has gone by a lot of people. You see, God indeed rested on the seventh day when he got through with the moon and the stars and all this stuff. But this day also represents man's day of rest. So man is going to have to rest on the seventh day. But the thing about this day of man, the man's day of seventh day, God also called it his day of rest. Yes. And the reason I know it's called it his day of rest is what he said to Israel in the wilderness. We're going to go and look at it. Let's go into the 95th chapter of Psalm. Each. Psalm chapter 95. He rested from the physical creation, but his rest wasn't over with. And this let me know that it wasn't over with. But this day that Moses, he had Moses right, sisters and brothers, that day also represents another day. Because people don't understand. Most prophecies have a twofold meaning. And if you don't understand that, you read it once, you think, well, this is over with. Going on about your business. Well, maybe you should go on about your business. Psalm chapter 95. Psalm chapter 95, we're going to start at verse 6. Psalm chapter 95 and verse 6. And we're going to pay attention to what we're going to read here. Psalm 95 and verse 6. Okay, go ahead. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker. Uh -huh. For he is our God. And we are the people of his pastor. Go ahead. And the sheep of his hand. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart as in the provocation and as in the day of the temptation in the wilderness. So he's saying, look, let us bow down. And today, if you hear his voice, you're not going to hear God focus speaking from him. How do you hear his voice? Through guys like me. Harden not your heart. Don't be like the people in the wilderness. In the day of provocation, yes. that means the day that they provoke God. Go ahead and read. When your fathers tempted me, uh -huh. proved me, and saw my work, 40 years long was I grieved with this generation uh -huh. and said, it is a people that do error in their heart, and they have not known my ways. Now, he destroyed Egypt for this people, fed this people with bread from heaven. Yes. 
brought this people water out of the rock. Yes. They still didn't believe him. So look what he said. Go ahead and read. Unto whom I swear in my wrath. Unto whom I swear in my wrath. Go ahead. That they should not enter into my rest. That they should not enter into my rest. How could they enter into the rest in Genesis, the second chapter? They didn't exist. There was no such people as Israel. So the rest he's talking about is beyond each teach. That's in the future, not in the past. Even though he rested from the sun and moon, he still is working, sisters and brothers. And this man has a, been a disappointment to him. That's why he drowned the whole world. Yes. I'm going to kill them all. But he saw grace in Noah. Yes. So he brought Noah and his children across and their family and populated the earth. And how many times he got ready to kill Israel and Moses had to talk about it. God been busy. How many times you done read where he say even God cried? And he was grieved at his heart. Grieved. So he had work too. So how could this day of rest is in the future be the rest that he took in Genesis the second chapter being that there was no Israelite he wasn't around on that day, on the first day of rest. We wasn't around. But let's go into Hebrews, the fourth chapter, and we're going to pursue this day that Moses wrote about. Hebrews 4. And we're going to start reading at verse 1. But nobody knows this because you get the people that's teaching going to heaven, it's going to be the status quo. Man going to always be here. Then you're going to die, and you're going to go to heaven if you're good. And when you, if you're bad, you're going to go to hell, and the beat goes on. That's not the way it's going to happen, sister and brother. But this is what we think. When I get to heaven, earth, uh, Satan has claimed his earth since he got thrown on it, and he's going to try to make it be something for us in the state where he can control us. So what happened if you're good, you go to heaven. If you're bad, you're going to hell. But the Lord spoke of something else because he had a day of rest, which he spoke by the mouth of Moses that have a two-fold meaning system. 11 and one, four and one, rather, four and one. Go ahead. Let us therefore fear, lest the promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should have seen to come short of it. Now, let us feel. So we won't come short like them. But go ahead and read. For unto us was the gospel preached. Wait a minute. For unto us was the gospel preached. You mean to preach the same gospel of us? Yes, sir. Didn't Moses say, this commandment which I set before you this day? Yep. That's the difference in life and death. He didn't preach nothing different. So unto us, but well, the same gospel preached, go ahead and read. As well as unto them. Go ahead. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Wait a minute. You mean faith was around in Moses and oh, the people's yes, day? Sir. All it said, it didn't profit them because they didn't believe it. Didn't profit them because it was not mixed with faith in them. Go ahead and read. For we which have believed do enter into rest. Oh, so he just replaced the word faith with, with belief. <laughs> yeah. Y'all see how it's interchangeable? People think faith is some great entity. When faith came, I keep hearing the Gentile preacher say that. <laughs> but go ahead. I ain't going to go there. <laughs> go ahead. As, as he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, Although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. So that means this day of rest had a little bigger meaning than you look at. Yes. It was good, physically at dawn, but he said the work was finished from the foundation of the world. That's why our sister asked me about some woman prophetess, you know. I said, what's she going to prophesy? The Lord didn't call the end from the beginning. Right. The work is finished from the foundation of the world. What do she need to prophesy? What you need to do is read this book. 
Go ahead and read. Verse 4. For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise. Go ahead. And God did rest the seventh day from all his works. Wait a minute. He spoke that. We know it from all his physical work. So why is he still talking about a day of rest? Because that meant more than just that, sister and brother. Go ahead and read. And in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest, uh -huh. see, therefore, it remained that some must enter therein, and they to whom it was first preached enter not in because of unbelief. Go ahead. Again, he limited a certain day saying in David, today, after so long a time, as it is said, today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart. You mean after so long a time? Yeah. For who? Man was created, but how many was it? Adam and Eve. After so long a time. Go ahead and read. For if Jesus had given them rest. Because that's who it was back there. You ain't never dealt with the Father. If Jesus had given them rest, go ahead and read. Then would he not afterward have spoken of another day. Go ahead. There remained therefore a rest to the people of God. There remained therefore a rest for the people of God. God called it his rest too, don't Yes. He? Go ahead and read. For he that is entered into his rest, he also has ceased from his own works as God did from his. Go ahead. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest. Lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. Of unbelief, of having no faith. So how is it that this day of rest could be passed? The people in the wilderness, God said, you ain't going to get into it. And Paul in his day said, let us labor to get into it. So we still here. So what do we do? We are laboring to get into it. That means that day of rest is at the end of the line, yes, sister and brother. Sure, he rested from all this work that he had made, the physical work. Like the moon, stars, the earth, the sun, man that walked over and and all that, sisters and brothers, and the animals. But still, there's a day of rest that's greater than that one for man. That is the one that's going to come, sisters and brothers. And let's go and look at it. Let's go in the 132nd chapter of Psalm. Each. Psalm 132. Moses is the one that set this in all the sisters and brothers. And when you understand Moses writing, it ain't no problem. It's all that simple. That's why I marvel at a lot of times. I was looking at YouTube with a bunch of preachers sitting around dealing with some subject. They even got mixed up in the subject. But the thing I noticed, I think about six or seven men and one woman. Thing I noticed, just stood out, out like a soul thumb. Nobody pulled up a Bible. Nobody. How are you going to talk about the structure of a house and you don't have a blueprint in front of you? Anything you say is wrong. Psalm 132. I'm going to start reading that verse 1. Psalm 132 and verse 1. Okay, go ahead. Lord, remember David and all his afflictions. Go ahead. How he swore to the Lord and vowed unto the mighty God of Jacob. Go ahead. Surely I would not come into the tabernacle of my house nor go up into my bed. He said, now, remember David, how he swore that he ain't going to go in his house and neither is he going to go to... Go uh, up on his bed, gonna go to sleep. Go ahead and read. I will not give sleep to my eyes go or ahead. slumber to my eyelids go ahead. until I find out a place for the Lord and inhabitation for the mighty God of Jacob. Boy, that David is stupid. Don't everybody know that God's habitation is in heaven? <laughs> How can he make such a statement? It's because he is not stupid. God don't want to stay in heaven. He want to leave. So what does habitation mean? That means where he's going to happen. Isn't yes. that correct? He said, I ain't going to rest until I find out. Go ahead and read. Six. Lo, we heard of it in Ephratah. Ephratah is talking about Israel, sister and brother. Why you heard in Ephratah? Because it's the Lord said Israel are the only one that he gave his word to. Yes. If you don't come to us, you ain't going to hear about it. 
You heard of it in Ephrata. Go ahead and read. We found it in the fields of the wood. Go ahead. We will go into his tabernacle. Uh -huh. We will worship at his footstool. Go ahead. Arise, O Lord, into thy rest. He thou said, look. We will worship at his footstool. We're going to go in his tabernacle. Arise, O Lord, into thy rest. Go ahead. Thou and the ark of thy strength. So he's going to rise into his rest. Skip down to verse 11. Let's put our hand on it, because David said he ain't going to sleep until he find out about it. We ain't going to get out of here until you find out about it. Right. Verse 11, go ahead. The Lord has sworn in the truth unto David. Go ahead. He will not turn from it. Go ahead. Of the fruit of thy body will I set upon thy throne. Now, this thing, you can look at it both ways. It's uh, the fruit of your body will I set on, uh, I'm going to set the fruit of your body on my throne. Oh. Uh, if you look at it, what he's really saying, of the fruit of our, thy body will I set on thy throne. I'm just coming through your lineage, mister. Yes. Go ahead and read. If, the, if thy children will keep my covenant and my testimony that I shall teach them, their children shall also sit upon thy throne forevermore. Now he's telling you, who is his children? You and I. If we keep his laws and testimony, we're going to sit on his throne forevermore. Yes. That is consistent with what Jesus said. In Revelation, yes, the third chapter, I stand at the door and knock. He, him that over, uh, that, that open up, I will come in and sup with him, and he with me, and I will grant him to sit with me in my throne, yes, sir. as I have sat now my yes, father sir. on this yes, throne. Sir. He's telling you the same thing right here. That's the promise he gave you. If you open up your mind and let my word come into you, I'm going to grant you to sit with me in my throne if I, as I have overcome and sat down with my father on his throne. He's saying the same thing here. Read that verse again. If thy children will keep my covenant and my testimony that I shall teach them, their children shall also sit upon thy throne forevermore. This is what he's telling you. Yes. You're in that first resurrection. This is your job. Go ahead and read. For the Lord has chosen Zion. He had desired it for his habitation. Where is Zion? Do anybody know where Zion is? Israel. That's in Jerusalem. Yes, sir. On the earth. The Lord have chosen Zion. I don't care what the preachers have chosen. The Lord have chosen Zion. He have desired it for his what? His habitation. Go ahead and read. This is my rest forever. This is my rest forever. Go ahead. Here will I dwell. Well, that's, that's pretty specific, ain't Boom. This is my rest forever. Here will I dwell. In other words, here will I live. Go ahead and read. For I have desired it. For I have desired it. So if you don't desire to live on this earth, what Jesus desired, then who are you following? <sighs> he said, this is my rest forever. So when Moses told, uh, wrote about the day of rest, it, it didn't stop there, sisters and brothers. It didn't stop there. Because he said, the Lord swore unto David, of the fruit of your body will I sit on your throne. And we know that was talking about Jesus. How do we know? Let me show you. Let's go into Acts, the second chapter. Teach, brother boy. Teach. Acts chapter 2. Because people have gotten away. Like I watched, watched all these theologians, all of them had a, some kind of godly title. And nobody had a Bible. I'm going to teach you how to drive a car, and we ain't got no car. That sounds like an impossibility to me. Acts 2, and we're going to start at verse 29. But we want to know who this is, this Lord is that told David, or the fruit of your body will I set on your throne. Verse 29, go ahead. Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David. Go ahead. That he is both dead and buried. And his sepulcher is with us until this day. You mean, oh, wait a minute now. Jesus had died and gone back to heaven at this time, hadn't he? Right. How come David is still in the grave? <laughs> because the Lord said he's going to raise him up at the last day. 
Let me speak freely of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried. Yes. Go ahead and read. And his sepulcher is with us until this day. And his sepulcher is with us until this day. Go ahead and read. Therefore, being a prophet uh -huh. and knowing that God has sworn with an oath to him Go ahead. that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, Go ahead. he will raise up Christ to sit on his throne. Oh, so now that means that was Christ back there that said, I have sworn to David yeah. that of the fruit of your body, I will sit on your throne. Yes. So now we know who he's talking about, don't we? Where was David's throne? David's throne was in Jerusalem, yes. which is called Zion, sisters and brothers. But he had to go there. Because that's when he's going to create, this is when he gonna, and that's when he's going to do it. On what day? The day of rest. Let's go into Isaiah the 11th chapter. Isaiah chapter 11. All this stuff is going down and jumping off, sisters and brothers, and we looking at it, and somebody don't believe this Bible? If you don't believe it, that means you haven't read it. But people keep coming to me, brother boy, what are we going to do? I said, what you're going to do is you're going to wait until they build a temple in Jerusalem. That's right. Then you're going to wait until Pope move into it. Then you're going to run. That's right. With the quickness. But until that time come, why are you sweating and being worried? 11 and 1. Go ahead and read. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. See, Jesse is father's daddy. So this rod out of the stem of Jesse went, uh, uh, is, uh, is David. David's uh, uh, daddy. Jesse is David's daddy. So this stem that come through Jesse, it had to go also through David too. Go ahead. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Go ahead. The spirit of wisdom and understanding. Go ahead. The spirit of counsel and might. Uh-huh. The spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. That means this guy here, he going to have it all. Skip down to verse 5. Go ahead. And righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins, uh -huh. and faithfulness the girdle of his reins. Go ahead. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb. And the leopard shall lie down with the kid. Go ahead. And the cows and the young lion and the fattening together. And the little child shall lead them. That's when, the, that's when this stem of Jesse come. Animal not going to attack animals. Animal not going to attack men. Baby's going to be able to play in snake dens. And don't get bit. Go ahead and read. And the cow and the bear shall feed. Go ahead. Their young ones shall lie down together. Uh -huh. And the lion shall eat straw like the ox. We know that's all future, don't it? Jump in the lion's den with a handful of straw and see what he eat. <laughs> Go ahead. And the sucky child shall play on the hole of the asp. Uh -huh. And the weaned child shall put his hand on the cockatrice's den. Snakes don't know nothing about child. And if you put a deal with a snake, he going to bite you. But go ahead and read. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain. When the Lord come on his day of rest, Ain't, no, ain't gonna be no destruction. He's in all of my holy mountain. What's gonna be his holy mountain? The whole planet. Because he said he's gonna rule this planet from yes. sea to sea. Go ahead and read. For the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord Ooh, as I the know, waters cover the sea. Wait a minute. I know that is future. <laughs> yeah. For the earth shall be full of, Lord, of knowledge of the Lord like the water cover the sea. Yeah. Where is all this knowledge? Why are you going to have houses full of people tomorrow? That'll let you know this is all future. Go ahead and read. And in that day, there shall be a root of Jesse. Because David is the root and the offspring, uh, Jesus is the root and offspring of David. So he's a, he's a uh, offspring of Jesse. Yeah. And he's the root of Jesse. Go ahead and read. Which shall stand for an inside of the people. Go ahead. To it shall the Gentiles seek. Go ahead. And his rest shall be glorious. And his what? His rest. Because the whole earth is going to be at rest. Go ahead and read. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt and from Petros and from Cush and from Elam and from Shinar and from Hamath and from the islands of the sea. Don't you know it's from the islands of the sea and Hamath are the only ones that are not pure black countries? Our people, we got most of the Israelites 
scattered among black folks. I said. But he said, but in that day, his rest is going to be glory. Yes, sir. Let's go into Isaiah, the 14th chapter. Yes, Isaiah sir. Isaiah chapter 14. And we're going to start at verse 1. Isaiah 14 and verse 1. He's going to even let us have some service, too. We ain't going to be abusing him and doing him like the other nations did us, beating us and all that, and castrating the males and raping them. Uh-uh, that ain't going to happen. We're going to have some service, too. But we're not, I'm not concerned with that. Verse 1, 14 and 1. Go ahead and read. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob, uh -huh. and we'll yet choose Israel. No matter what the people say, we his people forever. Go ahead. And set them in their own land, and the strangers shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. So now we're going to go to our own land, but you're going to have some strangers that are going to cleave to us. These people are doing it on their own. Yes. Go ahead and read. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess the house, uh, possess, possess them in the land of the Lord for service and handmaids. Go ahead. And they shall take them captives, whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. You're going to rule over the, our oppressors, not me. I'm going to be God. Yeah. But we are not going to be oppressors. Y'all understand? Yes. Go ahead and read. And it shall come to pass in the day, in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow uh -huh. and from thy fear and from thy hard bondage wherein thou was made to serve. Go ahead. That thou should take up this proverb against the king of Babylon and say, how hath the oppressor ceased? The golden city ceased. Uh -huh. The Lord has so, broken. So how, so how have the oppressor ceased? Because the Lord going to be then broken. The golden city ceased. That means... Discon you know, cease to continue. Right. Stop. Go ahead and read. The Lord has broken the staff of the wicked uh -huh. and the scepter of the rulers. Keep reading. He who smote the people in wrath with a continuous stroke, he that ruled the nations in anger, is persecuted and none hindereth. So the Lord is going to take down the Gentile dynasty. Yes. And what's going what's to gonna, what's gonna be the state of the earth? Go ahead and read. The whole earth is at rest uh -huh. and it's quiet. They break forth in the singing. So the whole earth is going to be at rest, sister and brother. That is the Lord's day of rest. Yes. Which was a dual meaning when God said he rested from all his work. He's going to finish it on the day of rest. After the millennium period, a thousand years of rule of Jesus, when it's over with, then the Lord is going to terminate death. He's going to do it all on the day of rest. So this Moses, Moses, sisters and brothers, was a prototype for Jesus, and people don't understand that. That's why if you hear Moses, you've got to hear Jesus. Let's show you what I mean as a prototype. Let's go on to Deuteronomy the 18th chapter. Yes, sir. Deuteronomy chapter 18. Then people keep trying to go off into the spirit realm. The Lord has put something in, in, put something in front of you that you can plainly see with your own eyes. Well, you know, the Holy Ghost spoke to me. I ain't never had heard the cat. Either. Over 55 years in the Word, and I ain't heard him speak to me Either. one time. I think one time I was praying, and I wanted to see an angel or the Lord. And I felt the presence. I got so scared, I chickened out. While I was on my knees, I said, I don't want to see it. I don't know. Uh -uh, no, no, please don't. And it went away. His word is sufficient for me. Like he told Dowden Thomas. Yeah. You see and you believe. Yes. Blessed are those that don't see and believe. Yes. His word is sufficient. Verse 9. Deuteronomy 18 and verse 9. Because this is why, this is where and let you know that Moses is a prototype for Jesus. Go ahead and read. When thou art coming to the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do up after the abominations of those nations. Uh-huh. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that use a divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch. He said, look, when you go in this land, I don't want you to do the same thing they talk about and what they're doing. They call the people to pass through the fire. Well, we wouldn't do it. Well, you, but what about the people that deal with familiar spirits? Yes. And divination? Yes. 
and dead folks. You got these houses, see, with women mostly, all, all I've ever seen, they call seals. He said, the people that I threw out from before you, they do this. Go ahead and read. Verse 11, or a charmer, or a consultant with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. You know what a necromancer is? People that deal with the dead. Yes. No, I said, no. The people in the land that I threw out dealt with all of this kind of stuff. You don't do this. I'm going to tell you where your edification is going to come from. Skip down to verse 15. Verse 15 and go ahead. The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren, like unto me, unto him shall you hearken. This, way, this is the one where your instruction will come from. Not from a witch, not from a wizard, no. not from a familiar spirit, not from a dead person, and, that's a uh, uh, and you're a necromancer dealing with the dead. The Lord your God is going to raise up a prophet from among you. That's how he's going to instruct you. From among your brothers, like unto me. Yes. And I mean, it was just like it. Go ahead and read. According to all that thou desirest of the Lord thy God in Horeb in the day of the assembly, saying, let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, neither let me see this great fire any more that I die not. Now, see, maybe the Lord would have showed up in the spirit ever so often and talked to him. But our forefathers said, no, no, don't let him do that. Uh-uh. No, Moses, well, you, you talk to him. Then you tell us what to do, we go obey you. But we don't know, want him to show up in his spirit form no more. And what did the, and what the Lord say, now, so this prophet that I'm going to raise up from, from among your brethren like unto me, this is by your request. So I'm going to grant you your request. Go ahead and read. 17, and the Lord said unto me, they have well spoken that which they have spoken. He said, look, so I've heard them clearly. Yes. Go ahead and read. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren. So like I'll the raise them a prophet from among their brethren. Go ahead. And we'll put my words in his mouth. Uh -huh. And he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. He said, and he going to speak all that I shall command him. That means that this word that Moses speak didn't come out of his mouth. Uh -uh. And the one that he going to Raise up from among people, like unto him, the words are not healed. That's why Jesus said, I do only what my father say and what I see. Yes. Just like Moses got it from the, from the son, which got it from the father, then Jesus got it from the father. Keep reading. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. And whoever won't hear this prophet is going to be required of him. And we're going to let you know what, when Jesus painted, when he said we're going to be required of it. Let's go into Acts, the third chapter. Acts, the third. So if he don't come by way of Moses, you know that the Lord didn't send him, sister and brother. Oh, that's the Lord giving you all kind of indication so you will know when a false prophet come to you. Because he don't come to you like under Moses. That's what he said about the Pharisees. They said Moses' seat. They said in the seat, but they are not Moses. Why? Because they're not even in the spirit of Moses because they don't teach what Moses said. Yes. Acts 3. And we're going to start reading at verse 19. Acts 3 and verse 19. 3 and 19. Acts 3 and verse 19. Okay, read it. Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. So repent from you, and, and so you be ready when the Lord come. Go ahead and read. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before, which before was preached unto you. Go ahead. Whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution Go of ahead. all things which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. He said, I sin. He's going to send his son, Jesus. This son, Jesus, all of the prophets that spoke about since the world began. Go ahead and read. 
For Moses truly said unto the fathers. For Moses truly said unto the father. Go ahead and read. A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you. A of, prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you. Of your brethren. That means he had to come as an Israelite, didn't he? Yes, sir. Go ahead and read. Like unto me. Uh-huh. Him shall you hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you. He, he said, now him, you better hear everything he said unto you. Why? Go ahead. And it shall come to pass. That every soul which will not hear that prophet shall be destroyed from among the people. And let me know these brothers don't know what they're doing when they try to condemn Jesus. First thing is, the Lord said he's going to be, he's going to raise up a prophet from among your brethren. That means he had to be an Israelite. Had to be. Like unto me. Moses had to flee to keep from being killed by Pharaoh. That's right. Jesus had to flee to keep from being killed by Herod. Pharaoh killed all of the males to try and catch, kill Moses. Herod killed all of the males in Judea, in Jerusalem, to try to kill Jesus. Like, just like when Pharaoh condemned Moses, fled to the land of Midian. When Pharaoh died, the angel went down and told Moses, all that seek your life is dead. Come on back to Egypt. When Herod died, the Lord sent the angel down into Egypt where Jesus had fled to. They said, come on back because they that seek your life is dead. Are dead. That's like when, G when Moses died, a generation died. When Jesus died, a generation died. Y'all understand? He's like unto Moses. You cannot mistake this guy. So now, Moses set the agenda. He put the rules in order, sisters and brothers, and even Jesus didn't deviate from these rules. Give you a good example. Let's go into St. Luke, the third chapter. Luke chapter 3. Because just like Jesus' word is going to stand, so did Moses' word. It had to stand. Because, like I said, he's a prototype of Jesus. Luke chapter 3, and we're going to start reading at verse 21. Luke chapter 3, and we're going to start reading at verse 21. Okay, read it. Now when all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also being baptized and praying, the heaven was open. Uh -huh. And the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him. Now Jesus got baptized, you know why? Because he's the captain of our salvation. We got to follow him. So the Holy Ghost descended upon him in the bodily form of a dove. Go ahead and read. And a voice came from heaven which said, Thou art my beloved son, in thee I am well pleased. Go ahead. And Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age, being as was supposed the son of Joseph, which was the son of Heli. Now, when Jesus got baptized and that Holy Spirit come down and anointed him, that's when he became the Christ, or the anointed one, or the Messiah. That's when he started his ministry. Yes. How old was Jesus? 30. 30 years old. Don't you know at 12 years old, he was asking and answering questions from the elders of Israel? Yep. At 12, you got all this knowledge. Why is it that you wait to 30? You've been robbing the world all this time with this great knowledge. Because the first thing if you're going to serve God is you got to keep the law. Now, I'm going to show you why he started at 30. Let's go into Numbers, the fourth chapter. Teach. This Make is what people don't understand. Righteous people do righteous things, not evil. Numbers, chapter four. See, man running around doing every kind of evil stuff on the planet, breaking all the laws. And he going, well, I'm a minister or servant of God. What God you a minister for? Not the one of this Bible. 
4 and 1. Numbers chapter 4, and we're going to start reading that verse 1. 4 and 1. Okay, go ahead. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, Take the sum of the sons of Kohath from among the sons of Levi, after their <coughs> families, by the house of their fathers. Now, these are the priests. Go ahead. From 30 years old and upward, even unto 50 years old, all that enter into the host to do the work in the tabernacle of the congregation. From 30 to 50. I got a lot of brothers nowadays. They're trying to argue with me about that 50. Then they're coming to the word and they're over 50. Can I teach? Not according to the book. But I'm going to do it anyway. Well, I ain't got nothing to do with that. You asked me the question, I answered it. <laughs> 30 to 50. Let's get at another one another one of uh, 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 Aaron's son. Skip down to verse 21. Verse 21 and go ahead. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take also the, also the sum of the sons of Gershom throughout the houses of their fathers by their families. From 30 years old and upward unto 50 years old shalt thou number them, all that enter in to perform the service, to do the work in the tabernacle of the congregation. There's another one of Aaron's son. Skip down to verse 29. Verse 29. And go ahead. Ask for the sons of Merari. Thou shalt number them after their families by the house of their fathers. Go ahead. From 30 years old and upward, even up to 50 years old, or old shalt thou number them. Everyone that entered into the service to do the work of the tabernacle of the congregation. Skip down to verse 46 and go ahead. All those that were numbered of the Levites, whom Moses and Aaron and the chief of Israel numbered after their families and after the house of their fathers, uh -huh. from 30 years old and upward even up to 50 years old, everyone that came to do the service of the ministry and the service of the burden of the tabernacle of the congregation. So now you see why Jesus, with all his wisdom and knowledge, did not start his ministry until he was 30. Because that's the law. That's the law. You see some little 12 or 15-year-old boy running around, seven-year-old boy, they got him out there touching. You know, the Lord didn't touch him and he preaching. What is he preaching? Then you laugh at him, but you see this guy that's over 50, he want to come in and preach to you. Well, you know, you don't let, look, he's under the same law, ain't it? If Jesus didn't preach it, who are we to preach it? Can't do it. But who's writing? Set the agenda, sisters and brothers. Moses. Moses, right. If Moses, if, if Moses didn't write it, this is what the people don't understand. It didn't happen. You just have to have the eyes to see it. We're going to show you something else. That you have, if you don't have the eyes that's been trained by God, what do you mean trained by God? That study this book and study this book and yes, pray sir. for understanding. You won't see it. Let's go into Genesis, the 49th chapter. This is when the Lord was blessing, when Jacob was blessing his son. Somewhere some people think that they have room to interpret the word of God. No, ain't no room for interpretation. You read it like it is, and if you keep God's commandments, he will show you, sisters and brothers. He will show you. Some of the things the Lord has shown me, I just marvel at. I just can't believe it. And he give it to it, give it to you sometime when you need it. Just like when we was going to go and me and the, the deacons, that's what the elders used to be called. Right. And we're going to go and debate these Nazarene preachers. They had, they set me up. All of them got up and told what they believe in. Then when I got up and told what I believe in, then he hit, hit me with a question. Do you believe in the Trinity? I said, no. Then he go to 1 John 5 and 7 and tell me about three that bear witness. Right. He didn't know. Now, this was on a Sunday. He didn't know that the Lord had showed that to me that Sabbath, before I went out there, I saw it. I couldn't believe it. I even called Zadi. <laughs> Zadi said, well, brother, it's in the book. <laughs> when he read that to me, you know what I said? Go to Revelation, the first chapter. Yeah. Revelation of Jesus Christ, one, which he got from the Father, two, and he signified to his servant John by the hand of an angel, three. Three. And when John got it, three bad record in heaven and one in earth. I mean, all of them were sitting there. 
Even the deacon's mouth was open. You know why? Because the Lord had just showed it to me. That'll let you know you're serving a God. He's going to give you what you need. That is and come right. into mind. Don't, don't worry about what you're going to say. In that very hour, the Lord is going to put it in your mouth. He'll do it. Boy, I felt like the cat that swallowed the canary. I'm just looking at him while they was a hold over one another. Same thing with all of the Lord's servants. He show you stuff, and you see it when other people don't. Example, 49 and 1. Go ahead and read. And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together that I might tell you that which shall befall you in the last day. In what day? The last day. In the last day. This is end time stuff. We're not going to deal with all the rest of the brothers. We're just going to deal with Judah. That's the one through whom Jesus came. Skip now to verse 8. Verse 8 and go ahead. Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Now, first thing is, your brother's going to praise you, Judah. Go ahead and read. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Uh -huh. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Now, you're going to be the one that's going to give the enemy a problem. And your father's children are going to bow down to you. So whoever this is, it couldn't be Judah himself because Judah died, but if somebody come out of his lineage? Yes. Go ahead and read. Judah is a lion's well. Uh-huh. From the prey, my son. Go ahead. Thou art gone up. He stooped down. He couched as a lion and as an old lion. Who shall rouse him up? Nobody. Go ahead. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet. That means the ruler shall not depart from Judah, now the law given from between his feet. Judah was the last kingdom that we had, yes. sisters and brothers. And when Zedekiah died, the kingship went in suspension. It ain't going to come back until Jesus returned. That's why the Lord said, I'm going to return it, overturn it, yes. overturn it, and overturn it. Yep. And it shall be no more until he come whose right it is. That's talking about the throne of David. And David come out of Judah. He was a Jew. So the rulership and the lawgiver should not depart from Judah until who come? Go ahead. Uh, until Shiloh come. Who is Shiloh? Jesus. Jesus, sister and brother. Go ahead and read. And unto him shall the gathering of the people be. Who is the who the people who who who, who are the people gathering to now? Shiloh, which is Jesus. Like he told Nicodemus, just like the snake. In the wilderness, when the Son of Man lifted up, it's going to draw everybody to me. Go ahead and read. Verse 11. Binding his foal unto the vine, and his ass his coat unto the choice vine. Go ahead. He washed his garments in wine, and his clothes in the blood of grapes. Wait a minute. You mean this guy was all this here? He was riding in on an ass, the yep. coat, the foal of an ass? Yes, sir. And then he did something weird. He washed his clothes in the blood of grapes. What is it that Moses was talking about that, jo that Jacob said? Let's see if we can run it down. Let's go into Matthew, the 21st chapter. Each. This is Moses writing that we're trying to find out what it means. Matthew chapter 21. You notice the Holy Ghost didn't speak to me. <laughs> but he's going to speak to me. You know why? Because as soon as we start reading the scripture, he's speaking. He's speaking. Yes, sir. Matthew chapter 21, Matthew chapter 21. And we're going to start reading at verse 1. Matthew 21 and verse 1. Okay, read it. And when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem and were come to Bethphage upon the mountain of Olives, then sent Jesus two disciples, uh -huh. saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and straightway you shall find an ass tied and a coat with her. Go ahead. Loose them and bring them unto me. So he sent his, his disciples. Go ahead, and you're going to find an ass tied. I want you to loose them and bring them to me. Go ahead and read. And if any man say aught unto you, you shall say, The Lord had need of them, and straightway he will send them. Go ahead. All this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell ye the daughter of Zion, Behold, the, thy king cometh unto thee, 
meek and sitting up on an ass and a coke the foal of an ass. Wait a minute. The king, thy king, is the king of Israel. He ain't nobody else's king. That's why he is going to adopt all of the rest of the sons of Adam during the millennium period, and they will be Israel too. But did he say he come lowly and riding up on an ass, the coat to fold of an ass? Wait a minute. This must be the ass that Jacob was talking about that Judah tied to the vine. Go ahead and read. Verse 6. And the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them and brought the ass and the coat and put on them their clothes and they set him their own. Go ahead. And a very great multitude spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches from the trees and straw them in the way. Go ahead. And the multitude that went before and that followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Hosanna means save now. To the son of David, go ahead and read. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Go ahead. And when he came. And, uh, and, and, and the people, is a Hosanna to the highest. Yes. What happened? Read one more verse. Go ahead. And when he came and he and when he was come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? Who is this? And Who? the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. That's Jesus. So now, Jacob was telling his sons about Jesus who tied his coat, his ashes coat to a vine. But then here we find out that Zechariah had quoted the same thing. Let's go into Zechariah the ninth chapter. Yes, sir. Zechariah chapter 9. Because nobody pays attention to the Bible. Like I said, all these people sitting up there talking about the Word of God and nobody had a book in their hand. Zechariah 9, and we're going to start at verse 9. Zechariah chapter 9, and we're going to start reading at verse 9. Because this whole thing has been laid out, it's been plotted out. That's why I can't change. He said, brother, you said to me, oh, brother, you're a prophet. I said, if I am, I'm a second-hand prophet. And some curious a third and fourth hand prophet. Yes. Don't even bring that to me. I ain't hearing that. I ain't gonna jeopardize my salvation to you trying to give me some glory that belonged to God. Don't bring it to me. Zechariah 9 and verse 9. Okay, read it. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Uh-huh. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Go ahead. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon an ass. Now, isn't that what? Uh, uh, Matthews wrote? Yes. But then Moses wrote it first. But let's look what's going to happen. Go ahead. And upon a coat, the foal of an ass. Go ahead. And I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim uh -huh. and the horse from Jerusalem. Go ahead. And the battle boat shall be cut off. Go ahead. And he shall speak peace unto the heathen. And his dominion shall be from sea even to sea and from the river even to the ends of the earth. So now, that means if he's going to cut and he's going to cut off the battle bow, that's out of the earth, period, and he is going to rule from sea to sea, then I can see why he tied that ass up. Because you don't do great victory like that on a donkey. Nope. But before all that happened, he had to do something else. Read the next verse. 11. As for thee also... By the blood of thy covenant, I have sent forth thy prisoners out of the pit wherein is no water. Also by thee also, by the blood of thy covenant, have I sent forth your prisoners out of the pit where is no water. In other words, he had to die for the sins of the people, yes, sisters sir. and brothers. Yes, sir. Otherwise, when he came back, he'd be saving dead men. He had to get us out from under that death symbol before he is going to rule from sea to sea. So now, he came, rode in on the ass. He died for our sins. Yes. But now he don't eat, need the ass no more. So what did he do? He tied the ass to a vine. Ain't that what Jacob said? Yes, sir. Ain't that what, ain't that what Moses said? Yep, wrote it. So now, for what he got to do, he need a horse. 
teach, teach. He tied the ass up. Now he didn't change mouth. Let's go into Revelation 19 chapter and look at it. Revelation chapter 19. Tied it up. And this is what people don't understand. The ass is tied up now. And this is what you got to look forward to. Revelation 19, and we're going to start reading at verse 11. Revelation 19 and verse 11. Okay, read it. And I saw heaven open, uh -huh. and behold, a white horse. Wait a minute. What happened to the ass? Tied it up. Oh, he tied it up, right? Tied it up. Tied it up. Ass is good for you to ride in to die. But you need a bigger steed to ride in to kill. White horse. See, because he's going to cut off the battle bow out of the earth, ain't he? Go ahead and read. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. Go ahead. And in righteousness he do judge and make war. He coming to make war now. Go ahead and read. His eyes were as a flame of fire. And on his head were many crowns. Go ahead. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. Go ahead. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. Wait a minute. Vesture dipped in blood? That's getting close to talking about washing his robe in the blood of grape. Yeah. Oh, well, we're about to find out something here. Go ahead and read. And the armies which were with him in heaven followed him upon white horses. Go ahead. Clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Uh -huh. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he shall smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. That's, that's from coast to coast, from sea to sea. He's going to rule them with the rod of iron. Go ahead and read. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. Oh, that winepress that he tread is not wine and grapes in, in, in the first place. These talking about people he traded. Go ahead and read. And he had on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Now look, hold this spot here. Because I'm coming right back. Back up to Revelation, the, 40, the 14th chapter. We're going to see what this wine, the blood of grapes, is. Just back right up to Revelation, the 14th chapter. And we're going to read one verse. Revelation 14 and one verse. Verse 20. Read it. And the wine press was trodden without the city. Oh, so now remember, Moses wrote that he washed his... Garments in the blood of grapes, didn't right. So the wine press was tread without the city. Go ahead. The bl and blood came out of the wine press. Oh, so that's what he stained his raiment with. Blood. Go ahead and read. Even unto the horses' bridles, by the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs. Wait a minute. How hmm. many miles is that? Two hundred miles. Blood is going to be up to the horses' bridles. That have to be at least here, right? Got to. He's going to kill so many people. Gonna be so much blood, it's gonna look like a lake. So now we see he washed his garments in the blood of grapes after he tied the ass to the vine. And let's go back to 19 chapter Revelation and pick it up at verse 19. And we're gonna see when, it, when it's gonna jump off, as the young folks used to say in my day. That was a long time ago. 19 and 19, read it. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse uh -huh. and against his army. Go ahead. And the beast was taken and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast and them that worship his image. Go ahead. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. He didn't even bother to let them stand in judgment because they knew what they was doing. So God is not a vain God. He just did them. They let them know that people in the white throne judgment, all of them are not cut off. Otherwise, he wouldn't have no judgment. He would have just thrown them in there too. Right. But these guys said, a beast, that's the man that's going to be running the European Union, and the kings of the earth. And I'm pretty sure America is going to be a part of it. Yes, sir. They're going to make war with him that's on the horse. That's Jesus. 
First thing is the Lord going to take the, the, uh, 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 the false prophet and the head of the European Union and deposit them in the lake of fire. That let me know that the lake of fire is not here yet. What's he going to do with the rest of them? Go ahead. 21. And the remnant was slain with the sword of him that sat up on the horse, which forth proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. I mean, he's going to kill the whole army, sister and brother. That's what I tell brothers now. If you're in the military, <laughs> when that be, that false prophet go into the temple that's yeah. going to be built, yeah. go a wall. They ain't going to be able to do nothing to you because they're going to be too busy fighting and running. But let's go in the eyes of the 63rd chapter because we're going to pursue this washing, his blood, his garments in the blood of grace because that's what Moses wrote, ain't it? He wrote it. I'm going to let you know that Moses, sisters and brothers, what Moses wrote, when you get out of Moses' writing, you are out of flesh and blood. Ain't no more, uh, there will be no more existing. Isaiah chapter 63. Isaiah 63. Look to him, brother, I don't believe that. I said, that's okay. I wrote out the book. You ain't have no argument with me. You have the argument with the one that dictated this book. So that's why I don't get off into no argument. Want to debate? Why am I going to debate you for? For what? I'm reading the book to you. You debate the book. I don't need to look like some big person. I'm going to read the book and go on about my business. Oh, that's them. Isaiah 63 and verse 1. Isaiah 63 and 1. Okay, go ahead. Who is this that coming from Edom with dyed garments from Basra? Now, look, sister, you know who Edom is and Basra? The one that the world called you. Who is these that coming from Edom and Basra? Go ahead and read. This that is glorious in his apparel. Uh-huh. Traveling in the greatness of his strength. Go ahead. I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Amber one, that's talking Jesus. Jesus. Go ahead. Well, for art thou red in thine apparel. Why are your apparel red? Go ahead and read. And thy garments like him that treadeth in the wine vat. You know, that's in that wine press that uh, uh, Jacob told Yes. Judah about. Go ahead and read. <laughs> I have tried in the wine press alone. Uh -huh. And of the people heard there was none with, none with me. Go ahead. For I will tread them in my anger and trample them in my fury. And their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments. And I will stain all my raiment. Oh, so now we Jesus. know what Moses was talking about when he tied that ass to the vine and washed his garments in the blood of grace. That means his garment was red because it was stained with the blood of Edom and a whole lot of other people. Go ahead. What the, time is that? The, we had uh, verse 4. Go ahead. For the day of vengeance is in my heart, and the year of my redeemed is come. He said, that is the day of vengeance, the year that he's going to recover Israel, sisters and brothers. Skip down to verse 6 and read it. And I will tread down the people in my anger uh -huh. and make them drunk, drunk in my fury, and I will bring down their strength to the earth. The Lord's going to do that, sister. Because we read in 19th chapter, when he come down, he's going to take, going to get rid of the beast and the false prophet. He's going to kill all the armies of the kings of the earth, like he said in Zechariah, the ninth chapter. Yeah. He's going to break the battle bow out of the earth. When he get through, it ain't going to be no more, sisters and brothers. But who wrote that first? Who is it that read, wrote about what we just got through reading? Moses. 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 Now let's go back. Something else that Moses wrote. Let's go to Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. Each. Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. I mean, it's Moses. Like I say, the prototype of Jesus. He called it, sisters and brothers. Moses called it, and it had to happen. So we see great slaughter going on in Jerusalem and in, uh, what is this? Well, Russia is jumping Ukraine. all over, and Ukraine. But that ain't going to be nothing compared to this. This is what people don't understand. You got some ugly stuff coming. But then Moses wrote us some stuff that has befallen us. Deuteronomy 28, and we're going to start reading that verse 1. That's why I know it happened just like he did in the beginning. Right. What make you think is not going to happen in the end? 
He called it. In the beginning, it happened. When you look back behind you and look at history, it happened. So let me know, let me know that when I look to the future, it's going to happen too. Deuteronomy 28 and 1. 28 and 1. Okay, go ahead. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. All we had to do was obey the commandments of God, which are easy. They're not hard. Go ahead and read. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Now you're going to be the top nation, and the Lord is going to do all kind of blessings. All you got to do is his, listen to his voice. Go ahead. Blessed shall thou be in the city. Go ahead. And blessed shall thou be in the field. Uh -huh. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy ground and the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thine kind and the flocks of thy sheep. Now, I mean, everything that you do is going to be blessed. Yes. I mean, the Lord was offering us, was offering us a pretty good deal, I think. Great. Skip down to verse 10 and read it. And all the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. They really would have. They're afraid of us now, if you want to know the truth. That's why they kill you in a minute. I feared for my life, so I shot it. But you the police officer. You're the only one got a gun. I still feared for my life. <laughs> Most are done by Gentile sisters, brother. Skip down to verse 12 and go ahead. The Lord's will shall open unto thee his good treasure, the heaven to give the rain unto thy land in its season, and to bless all the work of thine hand. And thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. You will, he's, he even going to make us the financiers of the whole world. Instead of we going and, and getting bank, borrowing money from the banks and the Jews, the banks and the Jews, right. the banks would have been ours. They'd have been coming to us, the real one. Financially, Paul, I'm talking about he really put it out for us. Go ahead and read. And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. Go ahead. And thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath. Wait a minute. Above only? Only. All you have to do is be born an Israelite, and everything that went down, you was above it? Only. I can't even wrap my mind only. around that. Above only. Yes. Woo, boy, that's got a ring to it, don't it? What, what verse is that? <laughs> the middle of 13. Go ahead. If that thou, I'm sorry, if that thou hearken unto the commandment of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day to observe and to do them. Look, sisters and brothers, our fate was in our hands. Nobody else had nothing to do with it. That's why I don't dislike no other people, no other race, no other nationality. Because what happened to us, we're going to find out who did it to us. Now they're going to drop the other shoe now. Skip down to verse 15 and see what happened if you don't obey. Go ahead and read. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. You know, the Lord sure have Moses the right, which I command thee this day. Yes. Let you know that it's going to be in order in all days. All these curses are going to come upon you if you don't obey. Go ahead and read. Cursed shall thou be in the city, uh -huh. and cursed shall thou be in the field. Go ahead. Cursed shall be thy basket and thy store. Cursed so no, shall be the fruit so of... No, so no matter... Where you go. Yes. Go on your basket and your store. Go ahead and read. Cursed shall be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy land, and the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. You know who the fruit of your body is, huh? Your children. Curse going to fall on them. Most likely to get killed. Skip down to verse 25 and see what else is going to happen. Go ahead. The Lord shall cause thee to be smitten before thine enemies. Thou shalt go out one way against them and flee seven ways before them and shall be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth. How do we get here? Removed. We didn't migrate, did we? No, sir. 
who is brought here against our will. Skip down to verse 43 and go ahead. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high, uh -huh. and thou shalt come down very low. He didn't name a people. He said stranger. When Israel come out of Egypt, it was a mixed multitude. Yes. The stranger that's within you is going to come up very high, and you're going to come down low. Who building your houses? Strangers. Strangers. They even got to say, they even cut my grass. I had a black company to cut my grass. He cut it one, uh, two times and never showed back up. They're fixing your car. Stranger. They're selling you groceries. Stranger. I'm selling you bad meat. Everybody that was among you and below you when you come out of Egypt, that they didn't come up very high. You didn't come out very low. You got these immigrants that's coming in here. Watch and see whose job you go, they gonna get. Uh-uh. Teach. Teach. What verse are we? We have verse 44. Go ahead. He shall lend to thee, and thou shalt not lend to him. Who do we lend to as a person? Go ahead and read. He shall be the head, and thou shall be the tail. What are we the head of? Go ahead. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded thee. All you have to do is just simply keep the commandments. Go ahead and read. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever. See, and this is what I tell brothers. Come on, brother, uh, 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 you know, we ain't the only, uh, uh, you ain't the only <coughs> Israelite, you got other Israelites. I said, when people bring you that, tell me, you know, about the uh, Puerto Ricans and the, uh, and, and the Native Americans. Yeah. I said, wait a minute. How did the Puerto Ricans get here? Migrated. The whole thing is they migrated because they come from Mongolians, and then you come on down to Alaska, and then when the Castilians, which are the Spaniards, they hooked up with the Indians, the local yeah. people. And that's why you come up with Puerto Ricans and Mexicans. Did the Mexican get come here by ship? Nope. Puerto Ricans come here and got by ships? Nope. Did the American Indians come over here and slave ship? Nope. So then who was it? You. So then who are you? That's what it means. It's going to be for a sign and a wonder. What does a sign do? It points out. I just the brother. Teach. Sign on my head. This is the Hebrew Israelite because he was brought over here by ships. And what else happened to him? Keep reading. What for, verse? For 46. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness Go and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. Go ahead. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger. You're going to serve them in hunger? And in thirst and in nakedness uh -huh. and in want of all things. And you're still going to serve him and you ain't got nothing to show for it. Go ahead and read. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. Wasn't that, didn't we come, did you see the pictures where they got this guy with them yokes of iron on their neck? Yes, sir. Go ahead and read. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flies. Go ahead. A nation whom tongue thou shalt not understand. Go ahead. A nation of fierce countenance which shall not regard the persons of the old, nor show favor to the young. Now, we're going to skip down and put an end to this. Skip down to verse 64. And go ahead. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people, from the one end of the earth even until the other. You everywhere. Go Every, ahead. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. We don't know nothing about the God of Easter and the God of Christmas and the God of heaven. We just read that the God we serve want to come here. He said, I desired it, didn't he? Yes. Go ahead and read. And among these nations shalt thou find no ease. Go ahead. Neither shall the sole of thy foot have rest, but the Lord shall give thee there a trembling heart and failing of eyes and sorrow of mind. You labor and work hard, don't have enough to do nothing, but you scatter everything. Yeah. 
And you saw her all the time. Go ahead and read. And thy light shall hang in doubt before thee, and thou shalt fear day and night, and shall have none assurance of thy life. Who's most likely to get killed? Us. We are. Go ahead and read. In the morning thou shalt say, would God it were even. Uh -huh. And at evening thou shalt say, would God it were morning. Go ahead. For the fear of thine heart, wherewith thou shalt fear, and for the sight of thine eyes, which thou shalt see. Go ahead. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. See, Egypt to us is the house of bondage. Yes. He already said he's going to scatter all the world. So when he comes, he's going to bring to Egypt. That's the house of bondage by ships. How did we get here? By ships. Stacked up like planks, one way. Go ahead and read. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more Go again. Ahead. And there you shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women, and no man shall buy you. And when you get there, you're going to be sold to your enemies for male slave and female slave, and ain't nobody going to buy you out of it. Who did this happen to sisters and brothers? Israel. But Moses wrote about it while they was in the wilderness. That's why the Lord said, I called the end from the beginning. It's already been laid out, sisters and brothers. Already. Now let's go into Luke, the 21st chapter, because we're going to get to the modern day, the last of it, because we were scattered all over. And when Jesus was here, he told, he reiterated what was going to happen to us, sisters and brothers. Luke 21, <coughs> we're going to start at verse 5. Luke 21 and 5. Jesus co-signed what Moses said. Luke 21 and 5. Okay, go ahead. And as son spake of the temple, how it was adorned with goodly stones and gifts, he said, and for these things which ye behold, the days will come into which there shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. That's what Jesus told the apostles when they was admiring the temple. He said, look, the day going to come when they're going to be, this, this temple going to be thrown down. And there's not going to be one stone left up on another. That happened in 70 AD by the hand of Titus, a Roman general, sisters and brothers. That's when that was fulfilled. Skip down to verse 20 now. Verse 20. And he's going to tell you what's going to happen to us. Verse 20. Go ahead. And when you shall see Jerusalem come past with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. That's happened on the same one, Titus. Go ahead and read. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out. Go ahead. And let not them that are in the countries enter their end to. That's when it's time. He said, look. If you're there, you're supposed to run. We got a lesson to show you that. Yes. Because they, the one that tried to sneak out of the city or sneak back in and bring food, Titus and the Romans was crucifying them up to, what was it, 500, 500 a day. Yes, sir. And you only think that Jesus and the two thieves was crucified. Boy, do you have some history to catch up with. What verse? We are 22. Go ahead. For these be the days of vengeance that all things which are written may be fulfilled. Go ahead. But woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. Go ahead. For there shall be great distress in the land, and wrath upon this people. Go ahead. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captive into all nations. Uh -huh. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. What times are we in right now? Gentiles. Times of the Gentiles. Who run it? The Gentiles, the white folks are European. Who run it? Gentiles. They run this country. Who run Russia? Gentiles. Who is ruling Africa? Gentiles. Gentiles. You think some people, people say, you know, China is more about China or Gentiles? Gentiles. And the only one that's going to bring the times of the Gentiles to the end is the Lord. What verse are we? we had, that was the end of verse 24. Go ahead. And there shall be signs in the sun. Now, and it's going to take us down to the end days now, to the coming of the Lord. There are going to be signs in the sun. And in the moon. Uh-huh. And in the stars. Go ahead. And upon the earth, distress of nations. Go ahead. With perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. Men's hearts failing them for fear. 
and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. Now, because that's the time of the great tribulation. The yes. Lord's getting ready to end this thing. You're going to have people having heart attacks because they ain't used to seeing something this terrible that the Lord is going to bring on this earth. But go ahead and read. For the powers of the heaven shall be shaken, uh -huh. and then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now, once he do that, you're going to see the sun going to go black. That's a sign of the sun, and the moon going to yes. turn red. Stars going to fall. Heaven going to roll back like a scroll. Then they're going to see Jesus coming with power and great glory. So what did he tell his people? Read this verse 28. And when these things began to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draws nigh. So when you see these, look up. Because your redemption draweth near. So until Jesus comes, Israel is not going to be deemed or recovered as a people. But Moses wrote this. Yeah, he did. Note, that this was going to happen. Let's go back to 30th chapter of Deuteronomy. Moses called it. Moses called it. That's why the Lord called me to use the title Moses, God's prophet and lawgiver to all generations. All generations. Because he gave you a law that he said, in this day, you got the key. Deuteronomy 30, and we're going to start reading at verse 1. Deuteronomy 30 and verse 1. Okay, read it. And it shall come to pass when all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations whither the Lord thy God have driven thee. Go ahead. And shall return to the Lord thy God. Uh-huh. And shall obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day. Because when we go back, we're still going to have to do it. Go ahead and read. Thou and thy children with all thine heart and with all thy soul. Go ahead. That then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee. Go ahead. And will return and gather thee from all the nations whither the Lord thy God has driven thee. That's why Luke said, when you see this happen, look up for your redemption is near. Yes. Because you will not be redeemed until the Lord return and gather you. Go ahead and read. If any of thine be driven out unto the outermost parts of heaven. I mean the most remote part of the earth, because this is heaven because heaven, earth is the first heaven. Yes, Go ahead sir. and read. From this will the Lord thy God gather thee. Go ahead. And from this will he fetch thee. And the Lord thy God will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possessed. Uh -huh. And thou shalt possess it. And he will do thee good and multiply thee above thy fathers. Moses wrote this. So it have to happen. Now let's go on. To, we got two more places. Let's go on to Matthew, the 13th chapter. It have to happen because Moses wrote it, sisters and brothers. Matthew chapter 13. Because he's going to return you. And he said, if you are in the outmost, the most, the most remote part of the earth, he's going to gather you from there. Even you don't know who you are. You don't believe nothing. Somebody going to grab it and say, come on. But we got other lessons to let you know they're going to be looking for a blessing. Figure, hey, if we take the Lord, his servant, God going to bless us. Right. What did I say, Matthew? 13. This is Mark 13. Mark, Mark 13. 13, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mark 13. Mark chapter 13, not Matthew. And we're going to start reading at verse 22. Mark 13 and verse 22. Okay, read it. For false Christ and false prophets shall rise and shall show signs and wonders to seduce, if it were possible, even the elect. Now, I'm letting you know that false prophet, the one that's going to do the one that work miracles, that's talking about Papa over there. Yeah. And if it was possible, he would deceive the very elect. Who are the very elect? Those of us that know what's going on. 
or everybody else is surprised at what's happening, we're sitting over there saying, hmm, about time. Yep. Okay. That is when you have full knowledge. Go ahead and read. But take ye heed. Behold, I have foretold you all things. I have fore... Listen what he said. Take heed. Behold, I have foretold you all things. Doesn't mean ain't nothing going to surprise you. You know everything that's going to happen. Because he said, I have told you all things. That word all is absolute, isn't it? Absolute. Go ahead and read. But in those days, after that tribulation, the sun shall be darkened, uh -huh. and the moon shall not give her light, uh -huh. and the stars of heaven shall fall, and the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. Didn't Moses say, I'm going to return? Yes. He is. Go ahead and read. And then shall ye send his angels and shall gather together his elect Go from the four winds, from the uttermost part of the earth to the uttermost part of heaven. Didn't Moses tell you? We just got through reading that in Deuteronomy 30 chapter. 30 chapter. So no matter if you're in the most remote part of the earth, they call it earth, then it's a heaven, but he's still talking about the earth. Say so from there, he going to gather you. Moses told you that, sisters and brothers. Therefore, it had to happen. Because he said, I have foretold you all things. Now let's go in the last place. John the 50th. Peach. John chapter 5. Yes, sir. I'm going to tell you something. That Moses, I ain't lying. Mary and them better be that happened that God only turned her white. Yeah. <laughs> Some days he turned her back to black. You understand? Yeah. But talking against this guy, Mo, uh, uh, St. John chapter 5. St. John chapter 5. And this is Jesus talking to these Jews. We're going to start at verse 45. St. John 5. And verse 45. St. John 5 and verse 45. Okay, read it. Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuses you, even Moses, in whom you trust. Listen to what he's telling these you. Don't think I'm accusing you. Moses is the one that accused you. He's the one to tell you if you don't <laughs> keep the commandments, you're going to get cut off. He's the one that told you, if you don't obey my voice, I'm going to send you in captivity, and I'm going to sell you for male and female slaves. Yeah, he did. He told you that. Keep reading. For had you believed Moses. For had you believed Moses. You would have believed me. You would have believed me. Go ahead and read. For he wrote of me. For he wrote of me. Go ahead and read. But... If you believe not his writings, how shall you believe my words? But if you don't believe Moses' writing, how can you believe the Moses word of Jesus? So what does that say about the New Testament Christian? They don't believe Moses, therefore they don't believe Jesus. That's why they didn't come up with their own doctrine, sisters and brothers. Because when Moses put the pen down, sisters and brothers, it was over with. Y'all understand? Thank you for your time.